Who knew that in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, far away from the modern civilization, on an island that struggles to survive while it's in a real danger, I would find the coolest school in the world. It's called Toki. What you're about to see is the first school ever built with garbage found on the island. Things like empty bottles, beer cans and tires. Not only that, it is 100% self-sustainable. This is the best use of garbage I've ever seen. However, not everything here is as colorful and dreamy as it seems. Join me in discovering Easter Island and the incredible people of Toki. My name is Soren. I throw darts at the world map and travel wherever they land, no matter how far or difficult it is. Besides traveling with me, I invite you to do whatever you love before it's too late and live a life with no regrets. My passion is travel by doubt. I threw the dart with my friend Matt in India and hit Easter Island. We came here, did a lot of cool and fun stuff, but travel by dart is more than just that. It's about diving deep into the local cultures and showing you things that you can't find on Google, even if we have to go get them in the back of a pickup truck. Buckle up, because it's going to be some one bumpy ride. When we first hit Easter Island with the dart, we started thinking in our minds, what can we do to help the people of the land? And for us, I think telling the story of the local Rapa Nui people was everything and more that they asked for. I mean, these people were so wrapped up about telling their story properly because they're misunderstood. And I feel like we did a really good job of uncovering it and hopefully releasing it to the world. And our starting point uh, for this trip was uh, Toki Music School. Enrique Ica and Mahani Tave. Two locals who are authentic locals to Rapa Nui. This is like a, kind of a local powerhouse duel that's doing a lot of great things for their island. They love their people, they're extremely passionate and well connected. Today in Rapa Nui we are maybe 3,000 Rapa Nui. We are in extinction. They are our heritage, they are our people. Today we have uh, uh, dreams. We want to make uh, Rapa Nui uh, all 100% sustainable. The, the first movement is the music school. But along the way, we, we met a lot of people that are related to the school. Uh, every single one took us around. Every single one gave us different kinds of points of, of view. So what's this wonder school made out of garbage? We grabbed some food, our friend Mario, and jumped into our lip. We're in the back of a truck cruising to Rapa Nui today with our friend Mario, who wears many hats. He's a musician, he works at the museum here, yeah. he's one of the founders of uh, the Toki School, so we're gonna go to the school right now, but we prefer to actually do it like the Rapa Nui people do. While in the back of a truck. Yeah. Matthew. Matthew's <laughs> Bob. <laughs> I'm excited, I mean, come on, we're on Easter Island, the middle of French Polynesia right now, living the dream, it's sunny out, it's beautiful, we're surrounded by amazing people, and we're about to go film a bunch of kids who are the next generation of this island. So let's go inspire them, let's go live life, you know? Mario, what's, uh, what's uh, the school about? Tell us, quick. Uh, uh, the school is an initiative to build up uh, something to transcend, you know, and to build it uh, sustainable. So we create this school to share our knowledge as an artist, local artist, with the new kids. And we spent two years building up a music school with the waste materials. We recycle six years of garbage on Rapa Nui. We use 2,000 uh, tires, 40,000 aluminum cans, 25,000 glass bottles, 10 tons of cardboard, and 20,000 plastic bottles. Oh, you're sitting on my fruit tart. No, no. <laughs> That's what happens when you sit down with Soren in the back of a truck. Now we are at the Toki School. Toki is the Earthship Music School where they teach the kids, the young indigenous kids, how to not just to play the instruments but to preserve the culture, talk about sustainability. And uh, we're here to, to see how we can help. Yeah, now these guys are absolute advocates for 
you know, creating a better place for the island, preserving the local culture, and giving the kids a, a, a real place and a sense of respect for who they are and where they came from. Enrique donated this field for, for the construction of this beautiful school that we're about to just uh, visit. And everything about this school is completely different than traditional buildings. I mean, the, the whole thing is completely sustainable, from the farms to the materials to the construction. Uh, truly a wonder of this island. Like all these, how many balls did you say? I think it was 30,000 or, or 30,000 pop cans into the, into the structure mixed with the cement and then 20,000 bottles of it. This, this village is so small that I'm surprised they had 30,000 bottles to start with. But all these pillars are full with, with material just like that. The name of the, our uh, NGO, Toki, Toki, it's a piece, a little piece of rock. And this rock starts the old heritage and uh, culture of Rapa Nui. With this rock, start building the Moai and all ethnologies of Rapa Nui. Today we have uh, 70 children uh, study free music and that is very, very beautiful for us. Going on a trip like this, especially on Easter Island, which is the most remote island in the world, obviously requires a lot of resources and, and money. We had to look for, for all kinds of partnerships. You know, one of the goals we have is to try to make the world a smaller place, right? And not do it through the internet and like through cheap tools like social media and stuff, but to actually connect with people that we've never connected with before. We found this college in Canada, Robertson College, that uh, they really, really loved us, they really loved what we're doing, and, and they, uh, they said, hey, we'd love to support your experience. And they sure did. Being a multicultural educational institution, Robertson College partnered with us and, amongst many other things, they graced us with a bunch of gifts for the children of Toki. I hope Soren and Matt go spread this movement and help to activate, you know, and spread the inspiration for the new generation. So we like this school so much and the kids are so amazing that we brought also something for them, these beautiful backpacks uh, for them to wear. We only have two, but we got to give them to the school to decide what they want to do with them. These people are amazing. They're healthy, they're ambitious, they're very content with life, they eat well. You know, they don't have the corporations, you know, pushing products down their throat. The only thing they're really struggling with is the preservation of who they are and where they are. I remember we sat down one time with Enrique. He started talking and, and just opening our eyes to the reasons why he started the school and what motivates him and the passions he has as a local. And he's like, I spend half my time outside of the island trying to convince people of what the island's all about. You know, like people fishing in uncharted territories, taking our money, changing our livelihood, the, uh, the way that they charge taxes and issue money in, in certain ways to the island that um, the island kind of feels like being over, overshadowed and overlooked. Like their identity is just um, a souvenir in a shop. It's not a reality of life. Like they're trying to preserve their culture. They're trying to show who they are, but also stay who they are. And the more and more people come, the harder it is to do that. And Enrique is a great leader of the island. Everybody knows who he is. Everybody looks up to him. We need help to spread this project, uh, Rapa Nui 100% sustainable. It's a little island and the, our resource, the natural resource, we don't have a lot of water to drink, okay? And a lot of food. This is a very insulated place in which of course, everything is more difficult. If you want to do anything, it's a lot of different logistic, you know, cost of transportation. So much of it was about island sustainability. And they said, as people keep coming more and more, you know, our island's being popularized in the Western world. They're bringing cars, they're bringing like new technologies and things, not respecting our island and it's killing us. 
Uh, not, not them, but it's killing the spirit of the island and everything that it stood for for centuries. Today we use diesel generate for producing our energy. We use about 20,000 liters of diesel per day. And that is a lot. We have 3,000 cars on Rapa Nui. And that is a lot of problem too. We don't have a lot of uh, medicine or equipment to take care of our people. We have, you have to survive in Rapa Nui, okay? Everybody does a lot of things on the island. They, they have different little jobs. Yeah. They all contribute to, for one big goal. Yeah, speaking of that, when we spoke with Enrique, he told us how many hats he has to wear. He's like, I'm an electrician, I'm a handyman, I'm a music teacher, I'm a professor, I have a degree, like all these different things. And he's like, growing up on the island, you have to know a little bit about everything to survive. Today we have a problematic of the alcohol, drugs, and the young people go take the drugs, alcohol, and blah, 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 party, party, party. But we are uh, only 3,000 people. And that is, it's crazy, you know? You, they want to protect the culture and preserve it at the same time, especially the language. A lot of uh, countries want to help to Rapa Nui, but I don't know where the help of the country going, you know? But it's not here in Rapa Nui. They come to the government of Chile, and the government of Chile, abracadabra, and then we don't see anything. This movement, they have to start from Rapa Nui, from the new generation. We need to remember we are, we come from. The, our ancestors say, hey, you have to take care of your land. Hoko! So our purpose is in every episode of Travel by Dark, we draw a dart at the world map, we we'll go wherever it lands, and we try to help the land of the people. And in this episode, we committed to support Talking Music School. And Enrique Ica here with us, well, uh, hopefully you will accept our small token of appreciation on behalf of Travel by Dark. Thank you so much. Enrique has done an astronomical amount of change for this island, for the local people, and preserving the culture. We sincerely want to thank you for everything you've inspired us, and you really made the world a smaller place. We will leave the island of Rapa Nui with a million of life lessons. Most important being to always remember who you are and where you come from. There is nothing worse than losing your identity. We will have one last episode from Mr. Island next week, in which we will respectfully participate in a Rapa Nui tribal ceremony. But before that, you might want to watch the last few minutes of this video to see an incredible performance from Mahani, Enrique, and the Chilean National Symphony Orchestra held at the opening of the Toki School. Un abrazo muy grande a todas las personas del planeta con mucho amor, mucho cariño. Also, Enrique wanted to leave an emotional message to last for eternity in Rapa Nui language for those who he hopes will save the island's future. Hapa o korua, anga mai koruit me eribariba motkainga, hai mahatu e hai hau ha o te tukuna. Ya <laughs> Enjoy the show.
Thank you.